Okay, today we're gonna to be changing out the strings on my Obsession FXL. Just ordered new Vapor Trails and they just came in. So we got Lucas here down at Badass and he's gonna switch them out and explain to us exactly how to do it step by step. So anybody that's interested in trying to change their own strings out or wants to learn how, he's gonna take you through it and show you how it's done. Right? Absolutely. Okay, let's see. So first things first, Always, always, always order the best quality strings that you can. I can't stress this enough. This is one of the number one tools that you can have on a bow that's gonna make you the most consistent. The reason why it's so important, especially in hunting situations, is you start to go in different temperatures, in different humidity levels, and things of that nature, which are gonna cause the materials to expand and contract. So if you don't have them, the top of the line materials made by the best manufacturers out there, I promise you that is gonna be one thing that you're gonna be kinda of wishing you had if you get out into the field, start to get some peep twist or anything like that. But, all right, so first things first when you're changing out your own string. This is something that I learned a long time ago. One for one, take one string off or cable off from the old, uh, from the old set, you replace it. Then that way you don't have to try and remember where everything goes, or any of that stuff, it's just there as kind of a guide for you. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take off the string. Right here. And then what you wanna do, because you're probably, if, it's, if you're taking them off of a new bow and they haven't been shot before, you're probably gonna to wanna to keep these as a backup set. Uh, one thing that you wanna make sure that you do is keep them twisted um, the same as they were when they came off. Meaning don't let them untwist themselves in that and get something to put in between here like a paper clip or a tie or something of that nature that you can run through there so the strings don't untwist themselves and end up at a different length than what you need. Okay, because that's so, a real pain to get it back into spec. So if those untwist, what what's going to happen if you go to put it back on and they're untwisted? So that's a great question, Chris. So if you have this out like this and I start to untwist it, it's actually going to start to lengthen it. Okay, so what can happen with that, it's gonna adjust your let off, um, it's gonna make it so your peep isn't gonna be in the same spot, your drawing's gonna feel longer, uh, there's all sorts of different things. So the bow's just not gonna stay in the same tune that it would normally uh, that if you didn't let them go up. Gotcha. So just run that through there like that, close it up like that, that way they cannot untwist themselves. Okay. So we're gonna take our new string, since we took the string off, and remember we're gonna do a one for one here. So now we're gonna take the string out. If I can get this package open. Okay, another key thing to remember when you're working on the string. See, when they come from the manufacturer, they'll even have that paper clip on there so they don't come untwisted while they're in the package. And then another key thing to remember when we're looking at this is most string manufacturers are going to put that indicator right there that marks the center of the bundle on the top side of the string, meaning that's going to go in the sight window and you'll see where the serving is for your string stop right here. Okay, You want to make sure that that lines up so then that way you know that you're putting the string on in the right direction. So we're going to take this, we're going to loop it around here. You might want to come on this side. Well, that's right. Okay, so you want to loop this around here, make sure that that's settled in, and then just run the strings up on the cam like so, and make sure that that settles in like that. Stretch it down and just match it on the bottom side. Now when you get a new set of strings, they may be a little bit tighter than the strings that were on it because they do need to settle. Um, so if you won't, you may need to give it a little bit extra twist to tighten the limbs down a little bit to give you a little bit more uh, slack on the string so you can manipulate it. You can see here, we have the string stop lined up with this serving down here, which we can adjust, which it'll take a little bit of adjustment just to make sure we have that centered up. Center serving is here lined up with where the arrow rest is going to be where we're going to put the D loop and then we have this right here that marks the center of our bundle so we know where to put the peep so it'll turn uh, or so you're not going to get any uh, turning on it uh, it'll come back straight every time all right we're going to repeat that process but with a cable 
Now cables are going to get a little bit trickier than the string because you're going to have to get in here, you're going to have to take it out of the uh, cable slide. You may have a roller guard on your bow, um, it just kind of depends on the manufacturer. Uh, but again, if we take them off one for one, we don't have to try and remember which one of these cables goes top, which one goes bottom, which one connects, well, we'll know which one connects to where, but how you're supposed to run them through this. Uh, you won't have to remember that, so that makes it a lot easier. Uh, one other thing too to remember, is you'll notice that one side of this cable is served a little bit longer than the other. The reason being is because you have a take up side and you have a side that lets out. So you always want the more serving on the take up side of the cam. So when it rotates, what that means is that's the side that's taking up the cable, okay? Probably aren't ever gonna really need to utilize that, but just in case you're ever wondering which side goes where. Okay, so we're just gonna pop this off. So are you saying the take up side goes to the top cam? No, because there's a take up side on both. Okay. There's just a position on the cam that is the take up and the let out. So if we notice, and that's a great question, Chris, and if you'll zoom in here, if you look, see how this cable wraps around this portion of the axle and see how that's the small um, side of, or the, the small amount of serving. What happens here, I'll take this tension off, is your cam rotates around this way, okay? It rotates this way. So if you notice, that's actually letting that portion of the cable out, okay? Conversely, if we take this off, just for demonstration purposes. If I attach this back on here, okay, so this is what we call the take up side. So now if you look when this is rotating, see how that wants to grab that and take it up into the cam? Yep. That's what you're looking for, okay? Your cables are always gonna attach in opposite directions because one is letting out while one is taking up. So that's what we mean by that. But just always remember the more serving goes on the take up side. So basically they can take, if they take one of the cables off, whichever side has the long portion of the serving, they just need to make sure that the cable that they're putting on, that long portion on that one goes the exact yep, same. Yep, exactly, and that's, that's the best way to do it. It's just if you take it off for whatever reason, your buddy starts talking to you, you forget. Just always remember, you want the side that's served the longest because it's gonna get taken up into the cam and you want that, that uh, string material protected the whole way it's wrapped around the cam. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. So when we we're talking about protection, and that was a great question, right here is your serving material. Its sole purpose is to protect the material here on your, sh your string material from becoming damaged. I don't know if ever, anybody's ever seen these fray. Uh, there's some companies that don't serve them as they go through a roller guard or, I mean, any number of different things out there. But where this is exposed, this, that means that this is more susceptible to fraying or to damage of any sort. Whereas if you have it protected with this serving here, it keeps that, the integrity of the material. Took the, so this is the let out side or the let out portion of the cable, as I explained before. So we're gonna take that off one at a time. Again, taking the smaller served end because this is the let out side, not the take up side. We're gonna pop this on here. Always make sure to keep a little bit of tension and make sure that that seeds into whatever it is that you're attaching it on. The last thing you wanna do is let this thing out of the press thinking everything's on there correctly and have it just pop apart. That's never any good for anybody. Okay, so since we have that there, if we pan over here and we take a look at our cable slide, you can see this is the cable that we undid from the top so we're just gonna slide this out of its slot here. Okay, and then we're just gonna follow it and run this one through it, keeping it tight. So now we know that that's in the same spot that it came off of, okay? Now we can just kinda let that hang there. Then we're gonna follow this cable down even further, down to the opposing cam where it's attached. And we're just gonna pop it off completely, replace it, and boom, there you go. This is a little entangled, so we'll get this out of here. One thing I do want to point out, though, that I really, really like about these vapor trails, and there's some other companies out there that do it this same way, um, but these are working with them explicitly. I, I absolutely love this about them. They don't serve their end loops here. 
and I'll show you on this, they don't serve their end loops with serving material. They actually use string material. And the reason why that's nice, because here you get a nice pliable loop, okay? So it will seed around a cam better than it will if it was served and it was really stiff. It's hard to get them to settle in there. You have to let it set for a while for in order for it to break down and kind of form into the shape that it's supposed to be for these, the points of attachment on the cam. But if it's served with string material, it's more pliable, so you don't have to deal with that as much, which is really, really nice. Here's thank you for that. So do you feel like, is this something that somebody who's never changed a string on before, not a bow tech, just your average guy out there that's never, never put a string on before, do you feel like that they can just put a string on there, put the cables on there, and they're good to go? Um, you know, the only reason why I would say no to that is just because once we get the strings on, we're going to need to then check and make sure that the timing's right, the tuning's right, and all that stuff. Um, I, I really love to see archers when they take the initiative and they do that and they learn these things. Um, I mean, obviously running a bow shop, we, we like having, you know, we like having people come in so we can do service on their bows, but uh, I do like seeing people take that ownership on their bows, but if you don't, the, the key part of the whole that whole thing is, if you don't know what you're doing, don't try to do it, you sure. know what I mean? Because you can really hurt yourself. Uh, but the reason why I think this is so important, especially for a guy like you, um, is if you're in the back country, I mean, they make portable bow presses that you can take. You're in the back country, I mean, you had a hell of a trip this year going into Nevada. It took you, what, about a day, roughly, to get back where you're going? Yeah. Think about if you'd have had something happen when you were back there and you'd have had to hike yourself out for a day, go get it fixed and then come back and not knowing anything in that part of Nevada. I mean, if you're going hunting, you're usually going somewhere fairly remote most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, that probably would have put a pretty big damper on your hunt, 100%. right? I mean, I know how dedicated you are, so you'd have got it you're done. pretty much over at that point. Right, so knowing this stuff or knowing enough about this stuff and again, keeping these, if you're taking these off of a new bow and keeping them with you as a part of your pack is an absolutely wonderful idea. And you can buy these pulley system portable bow presses for you know, 50 to 100 bucks, depending on what brand you go. Put it in your pack. They don't weigh that much, but it's really nice to have in the backcountry because you can kind of do your own triage and get you through a hunt. I mean, obviously, you're not going to be able to get timing and all that stuff perfect back there, but at least it would get you, if you knew how to put the strings and the cables on, mm -hmm. it would get you back in business Absolutely. while you're out there and you can hunt. Absolutely, and you make you bring up a really good point there. Always, 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 even if you know you're gonna replace the strings, if you know how to tune or if you have a shop that you work with, have them tune your old set or your set you're replacing because when you take it off and you put them in those paper clips, it, for all intents and purposes, should go right stay and go right back to where it's supposed to be. So you're up on the mountain, you don't have to worry about is my bow timed? Is it going to tune sure. right or whatever? It should be there and good to go for you. So the last piece here, we're going to do the exact same thing that we just did on the other cable and the string. We're just going to take off one side. Let this side first this time. On the bottom. So we're going to take that off. Remember, checking. That's the long served piece. Okay. So we're going to take this. Attach it right on there like that. Make sure it sets down. Come up here to our slide. Pull the old cable through the slide. And then we're going to just loop that right back through the same spot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cut this one. It might take me a second to get this through. So what happened is, is as I was trying to feed it through here, this hole's a little bit smaller than the other one is, so I'm having a hard time getting it through. So one of the things that you can do is you can take the paper clip that was attached to your string set and hook it and just close that end of it. So now you have this as basically like a needle that you can thread through that slide and then just pull it out on the other end. Okay. 
usually it goes through pretty easily, um, but sometimes it doesn't. So you got to know the little tricks of the trade to get things through. We're still attached here. We're going to come detach that. Now, just so you know, I've been leaving these dangling, so that's exactly what I told you not to do at the beginning of the video. But for video purposes, I was just trying to get through this. But yeah, you want to make sure you're holding on to both ends at all times so you don't have those untwisting. But then, I'm just going to go right back around the top. And sometimes you may have to take it out of the track on one of them if you're trying to make a sharp bend just to get a little extra length on the cable. Loop this through. Hook it onto the peg, which is the most important part. Give it another couple of twists. Boom. There we go. Make sure that everything is sitting in its tracks properly. So you got here sitting in its track. Got down here sitting in its track. We've got our cable slide on and ready to go. Now all we have to do is take tension off. And I always suggest that you don't stand on either end of this when you're doing this the first time. So hold your arm over here, loosen it up, do it slowly. As you're doing it, making sure that everything's seating into place. You're not in any hurry when you're trying to let this out. You spent all this time putting these new strings on. You don't want to have something happen to them. But just like that, boom. Now you've got some pretty blue strings. That looks freaking amazing. <laughs> That's pretty slick. That's how you change out a set of strings the safe way. Anybody has any questions or anything like that, feel free to message these guys. We'll get them answered for you. Sweet. Thank you. You're welcome, man. There you have it. That's how you change strings. <laughs>